Welcome back to another construct video and it's been a little while since I've made a video so I thought let's sit down together and let's make cookie clicker. So let's get started. First thing we need is a blank construct page and all we're going to do is go to our size and set this to the size of our viewport window. So this will be 854 by 480. Press enter and it means that we're just working in one page. We haven't got any scrolling to worry about. We're going to actually start with our background first. So we're going to right click insert new object. We'll scroll down until we see our sprite, and we'll just call this our background. Click anywhere, and this is where you can design your own background. What I recommend is resizing this to be the same size as your actual background, so 854 by 480. Or if you prefer, you can just import your own. So that's my image in. I'm just going to hit the blue X and just place this in our level like so. Once you've got that done, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start creating our little shop panel. So we're just going to insert a brand new sprite again. Give it the name panel or shop panel, whichever you prefer. And for this, I'm going to be really, really lazy. I'm just going to grab the bucket tool. I'm going to go for a sort of orange color to match our background and just fill it in. Hit the X and I'm going to place this for how big I want my shop to be. So this size is about fine. Again, once we've added our shop, we can adjust that slightly. We're actually going to leave our shop alone for a little while though, because we're actually going to worry on the cookie site. So insert a new object. We're going to go back down to sprites. And we're going to type in cookie. And obviously this is the main point of our game. So this is the hardest part. You need to design a very delicious looking cookie. Or be very lazy like me and just copy one off the internet. Remember if you are copying off the internet, you shouldn't be releasing this as a paid game. You should be creating your own assets for that. If you're just making games and playing around and just having a bit of fun, then that's absolutely fine. Hit the X, and again, our cookie is way too big. We think that's going to fit onto the screen. So make it take up a large amount of room. Remember, we still need to actually put a title and see how many cookies we've currently got. So I'm going to place it in like so. So we're going to add that final thing being our title, and then we're going to get the functionality of the cookie working first. So I'm going to go into text, and I'm just going to call this cookie text. I'm going to place it and this can go above or below our cookie, it's entirely up to you or even somewhere else. And as for the text, I just like to write what I expect the text to see, so cookies and then the amount of cookies. I also like putting a really big number in because if I know if it can support a number of this size then it should work for our entire game, not just for the first half of our game. And then we can up the font size as well, let's say about 40 and just resize it to something we're happy with. Again, just making sure that number appears perfect and that's what my title should be. You might also want to adjust any other settings here. So one of the things that I really like to do is just make sure my horizontal alignment is set to center. You might also want to play around with your fonts. And after a little bit of playing around, I've got something I'm happy with. Next, we need to add in an input device. So I'm gonna scroll down to our different input devices and we can either use touch if we're making this for a mobile app or mouse. We're just gonna use mouse for today. But again, if you are using mobile, you can use touch instead. So now we can actually go to our event sheet and start adding in our first events. We're going to right click and add a global variable. And this is where we're going to store how many cookies we've got. By default, this is going to be zero. And then we're going to add an event that just says mouse on object clicked. And we can select our cookie, just hit done. Then we can add first of all, one to that variable. So system, add to the cookies variable by one. And then we could add another action to update our text. We're going to be very lazy today and we're going to add an event to do this every tick. And because we've got loads of other factors later on with our shop that can affect our cookie count, we're just going to use this to update our text and it means that we don't need to ever repeat this code ever again past this one example. So we're going to scroll down, set text, and we're going to write it exactly as we wrote it earlier. So cookies, space, and then I'm going to go outside my speech marks put an and sign and then write cookies and make sure I'm selecting this globe icon to say I'm selecting the global variable. And then just hit done. Now, before we actually start testing this, we need to make our cookie look a little bit more desirable than it actually does. So to do this, we're just gonna right click on our cookie, add a behavior. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom and go to the sign behavior. Now, if you've used sign behavior before, it's normally used for moving platforms. It allows stuff to move left and right or up and down. However, we're going to use a different option on it today, and we're going to use the size. 
Now in terms of the magnitudes, we're going to adjust this down to be quite low, maybe about 10. If you're on Construct Premium, you can actually preview this. And again, it just has this pulsing effect. I'm also going to apologize for any lag in this video. Uh, my laptop's running a bit slow, especially because I've got OBS running and some other tools in the background. So just bear that in mind if you see anything that's a little bit strange in this video. So now we can run it and see what happens. So we've got our pulsing lagging cookie. If we click on it, we see that value goes up by one every single time we click. So let's have a go at working on the shop now. And as always, as you're working on these tutorials, feel free to add your own flair. So for the shop, I've added just a line and drop the opacity down on the box. So there's lots of items we can add to the shop. We're going to look at three different ones. We're going to start by taking our current concept of clicking on a cookie and have the ability to double that value. So first of all, we're going to actually introduce a sprite first. We don't actually need a sprite for this, but it'll make it look much nicer. So I'm going to scroll down to my sprite, click, and what we're going to do is cursor shop icon. Once again, you can design what your icon looks like or simply copy one offline. Once you've got it, we're going to take this icon and put it as one of our shop icons. And I'm going to place it just about here. We also want some text to go alongside this to tell us how much it's going to cost. So I'm going to insert a new object, scroll down to I see text, and cursor shop text. Again, think about your naming, cursor shop icon, cursor shop text. It means that I know that these two objects are grouped together. Now we're going to place this text right next to this icon and we'll just move it in so we can see it. Now in terms of our text, again, I like to set up what we're actually going to put on it. And after a little playing around of what I wanted to say, I've come up with this. So it's going to be a click upgrade. The price is going to be 10 and the level is going to be zero. So what we want to do is actually store the price and the level somewhere. Now this can be stored directly onto the text or the icon. I'm personally going to go for the icon. So I'm just going to right click and edit its instance variables and we can store those on the icon itself. So we'll start with the price and I'm going to set this to 10 by default. Obviously you can play around the balance of your game. And then I'm going to go to the second one and level. It's going to start at zero because we haven't purchased it yet. So after a little bit of playing around, I've come up with this as my text. So it's going to be a click upgrade. The price can be 10, the level is going to be one. You can separate this with other text box if you want the click upgrade to have a different font or be bold. You can also use what's called, if we just scroll down, you can also use BB code. And I've got a video on that I'll link in the cards, which allows you to do a lot more customization with a text box. But for now, we've got these values here. Now we actually need to store the price and the level somewhere so we can actually use those variables. Now this can be stored on the text or the icon. It's tied up to you. I'm just going to put it on the icon. So I'm going to edit the instance variables and we're going to start with the price being 10. And again, you can customize the price for your own balancing of your game. And I'm going to add a second one being the level. And for this one, I'm going to start at level one because we're able to click and get one by default. So as we get to level two, we get two cookies per click. It just makes more sense to me. All the others will be starting at zero because we haven't actually brought them yet. So now we've got that, we can now go to our event sheet. So first thing we're going to do is actually with this first line of code here, instead of adding one to cookies, we're going to remove that completely and take the cursor shop icon dot level, and it's going to be by the level. So by it being level one, you get one cookie still. As those levels go up, you get more cookies per click. So we need a way to increase the levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our mouse and say on object clicked. And we can either pick the text or the shop icon or both as the way to purchase it. I'm just going to do the shop icon for now. So when you left click on the shop icon, now that's only one of the requirements we need to buy it. We also need to have enough cookies. So we're just going to add another condition, system, compare variable and say if cookies are greater than or equal to, and then cursor.shopicon.price. So have you clicked on it? Have you got enough cookies to buy it? If so, we're going to start by going to our system and we're going to subtract from our cookies. We need to take that away. So we're going to take away the cursor.shopicon.price from our cookies. So again, there's a penalty for buying stuff. Next, we're going to add an action. We go to our cursor shop icon 
and we need to set the value of price. So we're going to go to the price variable and the easiest thing that you can do to make your game endless is actually take the current price and then times it by a certain value. In this case, let's say 1.5. Now, this is going to end up with some horrible decimal numbers depending on what your starting price is and depending on what you're multiplying it by. So I just also recommend rounding the value right at the end and that'll give you, again, a nice round whole number to deal with instead of having lots of decimals that might go off the screen. So that's our new price ready for next time. This means now this is going to be more expensive for the next time. We also actually need to give the player the benefit why they brought this, which is increasing the level. So we can just add to level by one. And finally, before we finish this up, we just need to reset the text. We can see our level's gone up and our price has gone up. So again, we're just going to take the shop text and just scroll down to set text. And again, if you can write this out exactly as it said, that will make it more consistent. So for mine, it was click upgrade. Then I had a new line, so I'm just going to write and new line and to join another part to the string. The next part is going to be price. And then we put and and then we can put the cursor shop icon dot price being the new price we've just changed it to and new line and and then level in speech marks again. And then finally we just do our and and then our cursor shop icon dot and then level. If you prefer, if this is way too long to write out, you can also just have three different versions of this um, action. So what we can do is we can stop there. Then we can have a new one that has price and then the price on the end. And then we have a new one that has the level and the level on the end. So you can do this in three different actions instead of one giant one. So now we're back in our game. We're gonna start by getting ourselves to 10 cookies. We're gonna click. And now we've brought it, it's gone up to 15, it's level two. I'm now getting two cookies per click. If I try and click on it without having enough cookies, nothing will happen. We get ourselves to 15 and we click, we can buy it. We're now getting free cookies every single time. So again, really, really simple shop item. Let's move on to our second shop item. Our second shop item is gonna be an automated one. So one that's just gonna give us a cookie every single time, every second, without us having to do any work. So for this, we're gonna start by inserting our new object again. And just like before, we need to have an icon that we're going to use. So this is going to be bakery shop icon. And again, create your own or find one online. Entirely up to you. I'm just going to make sure I crop my edges on this one and press the X. Now I've got my icon in. I just want to resize it to be the same size or a similar size to my other icon. I'm just going to eyeball this, but you can click on each icon and you can set the size to be exactly the same that way. And just like before, we want some text with this. Now, instead of creating a new text object, I can just copy and paste this text. And that way it's already in the format for me that I need. I just need to make sure that I actually rename this. So instead of cursor shop text, I want this to be bakery shop text. And we'll get rid of the two as well. Put your new text in. And adjust the text. Now for this one, I've set this to zero because again, you haven't got any, so you shouldn't be doing anything. With the click upgrade, level one, you get one cookie at a time, just makes sense. Just as before, we need to click on our icon and we need to add some instance variables. This is easy to do on the right hand side and then you can add both at the same time. So starting off with price once again, I'm gonna set the price to 20 and again, have a feel for this, rebalance this as you need to. And then the second one is going to be our level and this time we'll start at level zero. That's it from this side, let's move to our Vinci. Now, we're gonna keep this really, really simple for the first part. We're actually gonna take this block of code and copy and paste it. Now, once we've done that, making sure you've selected all the code by clicking on this green arrow, we can right click and replace object. So let's start with the cursor shop icon. We're just gonna double click on it and grab the bakery shop icon. Next, we need to do the same with our text. So we're just going to right click again, replace object and swap the cursor shop text with the bakery shop text. And that is all the work that we need to do from that side. The only thing we need to do is actually make the automation work. So this is handled the buying of it, the adding to the level, the taking away the price, updating the text. 
And the only thing we need to really update with the text is actually change this from click upgrade to bakery. Just like so. Now we can actually add the automation. So we're just going to add a system. I'm going to scroll right to the bottom and every X seconds we'll do one second at a time. And all we're going to do is a system check, add to cookies. And all we're going to do is we're going to take the bakery shop icon dot level and add that to our cookies every second. As it starts at level zero, you get no cookies. As it goes to one, you get one cookie. Now to test this, we first need to get ourselves to 20 cookies. Again, we should probably test the price. Again, nothing works until we get to 20. Once we get to 20, you see that's gone up. Our price has increased as well. You also might want to change that 1.5 times for your different items. So more powerful items, such as the bakery or other items you might add later, actually has an increase in cost every single time to make them less overpowered. Again, if we get ourselves to 30 and we click once again, you'll see the price jumps up again and we're getting two cookies each time. Now, if you're making a much larger version of this, one thing that I can highly recommend is going to your global variable and giving yourself lots and lots of cookies to begin with. This makes testing much easier. You don't have to start testing by mashing your spacebar every single time or mashing the keyboard each time. Again, keep it simple. Just give yourself lots of cookies to begin with. When you finish testing, you can put that back down to zero. So our final item we're going to add is a factory and the factory is going to double our production from our click speed. It's also going to double our production from our bakery. So we get two benefits in one go. The factory is also going to be a temporary power up. So it's only going to last for about 10 seconds and then it runs out and then we'll have to buy it again. So it makes it a bit of a risk reward kind of item. So to begin with, we do everything that we do normally. We insert a new object. We grab a sprite and we create an icon. So just giving a head slightly, I've got my factory in, I've got my text in. The only thing I've changed is instead of having a level, I've got a time. And my idea with this is that every time you buy it, it'll increase in price, but you get longer with it. Again, you can choose how you want to balance this in your own game. Going to our icons, we just need to insert a variable. And just like before, we need a price variable. And for this one, I've set this to 20. Again, think of your own balance. And the other one is gonna be time this time. And this will start at five seconds. We also need to add a behavior to this. So we're going to insert a new behavior by just pressing add and behavior. Scroll down and we can grab the timer. Now we're going to copy and paste just like we've done before. But it's really important that we take the time to remove this add level. And we also do the same at the end here. And instead, we're just going to get rid of all of that at the end and press enter. Now, the reason that we're taking the time to remove those two things is because with them there, we cannot replace object. So by doing that, it speeds up our time. So we can now change the bakery shop icon for the factory shop icon. Again, this couldn't happen before because the factory does not have the level variable. We can then right click and replace our text. So bakery shop text is going to replace with factory shop text. So that's our first thing done with our price. Again, we can look at different variables. So stuff like the price here is being changed by 1.5 times. Maybe we want that to be doubled or higher. Again, later game items should increase in price more. We also need to go to our text and where it says new line level, we're now just gonna change this to be time. Add our and sign in before. Factory shop icon dot time. And then I also had an S to represent the seconds. So I'm just gonna add one more and, and in speech marks, write S. Now we've got all that activated. How do we actually work out the timer? So for this, we're gonna add an action, go to our factory. I'm gonna scroll down until we see the timer options. And we want this one that says start timer. Now we can choose the duration. And this is actually gonna be based off our factory shop icon dot time. And then we can give it a tag if we want to. I'm just going to leave that blank for now and hit done. So now our timer started and we can choose what to do with our timer. There's one more thing that I've spotted that we should probably fix while we're here. I'm just going to add another action to go our factory shop icon. And we can scroll down and we can add to the amount of seconds that we get each time. If the price is increasing, so should really the time that we get from it. So I'm going to increase this by 5 each time. So it goes 5, 10, 15, 20. So the more of these that you buy, the longer you get off the double production. Just found a mistake when editing this video. 
we start the timer after we add five to the overall time, which means instead of five seconds, it's gonna be 10 seconds. Really, really easy to fix. Just move your start timer just before you add five to the time. So what happens when this time is happening? Well, we're actually gonna add a new global variable and we're gonna call it production amount. And we're gonna set the initial value to one. Now we can go down to our production shop icon we need to decide how this is going to change. So we're going to say, is the timer running? And again, I've kept my tag blank, but if you've got multiple timers running on the same object, you can give it a tag so you can tell the difference between them. All we're going to do is add an action to our system. I'm going to set the value of production amount from one to two, which means we're doubling it. If you want it five times, write five times. And then all we need to do is add one final event here, factory, scroll down, and we've got this one called on timer. Now, once the timer happens, we can take our production to again, this time set it back to one. So again, this variable's not being used anywhere. So at the moment, this is all a bit useless. So let's use it somewhere now. We're gonna start by doing our clicking on our cookie. And currently the value is gonna be the shop icon level. All we're gonna do is times this by production amount. We also need to go to our automatic bakery which is on this one second. So we're gonna add one to the bakery each time. We're then gonna times that by production amount. And that's all set up, ready to go now. One thing we should change though is, how do we know if we're in this five second duration? So changing something visually on the screen could be really, really helpful with that. So one approach you could do is having a second animation for your cookie. So in this case, I've got a golden cookie. We could also have text come up to say that we've got double production cost. We can make the screen have disco lights. It's entirely up to you, but again, want to make this exciting for those five seconds or 10 seconds, make it really clear to the user that they've got that double production. So I'm just going to hit X on this now to close this animation. And then on my event sheet, all I'm going to do is if the time is running, I can go to my cookie and I can just change the animation. So set animation, this is going to be animation number two. And then once that's finished and on the timer, we're going to set this back to animation one. Again, none of this required, our code will work fine without it, but it's giving that feedback to the user that you're doing something fantastic right now. So I've currently got a bakery, so you can see my cookies are going up by one each time. I've only got a level one click upgrade. So now when I set this and I click, we get golden. I can double click for more cookies. I'm also getting two cookies per my bakery, and then it goes back to normal, and then we have to start again. One thing that I noticed is my text did not update properly, so it didn't change my time, and that's just because I'm adding five to the time after I set the text. So what I'd recommend is just moving that before the text there. That is our complete cookie clicker. Again, we could definitely add more shop icons to make this more exciting and expand our game, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. You'll find a copy of this code in the description as well. Hope you've enjoyed this slightly different episode, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, you're still here. Well, I guess we can do one more feature really quickly then. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert one final object. And what we want to do is save our cookies after we've logged off. So we're gonna actually access local storage for this. And then all we're going to do is every tick. And it needs to be pretty much every tick because that's how quickly we'll be adding cookies to our score. We'll do local storage, set item, and then we can put a key in here. And our first key is gonna be called cookies. And the value that we're going to set it to is cookies, just like so. We also need to do the same for our other items as well. Now this one does not need to be inside our every tick. So we can actually do this inside of when we buy an item. So we can set this for each one. So I'm just gonna set this just for our cursor for today, but you could apply this to your other ones. So we're gonna do cursor price. And again, we're just going to go into our cursor shop icon dot price. And for our second one, we can do the same with our level. So cursor level and change the price to level. And again, we'll need to repeat this for all objects in our shop. They're now being saved to local storage. We're then going to add an event system, scroll down and on start of layout. And now we can do the opposite 
we can do local storage and we can get item. And this is where we specify the item we wish to get. So we need to type it in exactly as we typed it in when we set the item. So cookies and make sure you spell that correctly. There we go. So we're going to get items. And again, we need to repeat that for our other items, just like so. So now it's got the items. We can add a new event with our local storage. And we've got this one on item get. So this will check when you've got the item from the local storage. And again, we need that key again. So we'll start with our cookies. So now we've got the value, what do we want to do with it? So we'll start by going to our system and we're going to set the value of cookies and we're going to use local storage dot and then item value. Item value being the item that we last got. And because this triggers when we get the item, that will be the last item being the cookies. Again, just repeat this for our other variables. So if I do one more for you, we've got the cursor price. And then again, instead of setting the cookie value, what we need to do is actually just go back, go back again, go to our cursor shop icon, scroll down, set the value, and we're gonna set the price to local storage item value. And that's it. Now you can close the game down, reload it up, and carry on where you left off. Just a really quick thing I noticed when editing this video is if you try and get cookies when there's nothing in local storage, you get NAN, which just means not a number. So really quick fix for this. All you want to do is just right click on the local storage, add another condition, go to local storage, and we're going to compare value. We're going to do not equals to and an empty value. This just checks, is there anything in local storage first? If there is, retrieve it. If there's not, ignore it. And that way you're not retrieving nothing, which gives you that weird error. So again, this is something that you just need to do for all of your items. And again, this is just a quick copy and paste job, and then that'll fix that error. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this slightly different episode, and I'll see you in the next video.